Hello and welcome to the channel. So today I'm going to be building one of these. An Express LRS 2.4 GHz nano receiver. So I ordered the PCBs from JLC PCB and I'm going to use a hot air station to apply all the components. So the first thing I'll need to do is to apply the solder paste. I'm going to do that using a stencil that I got when I ordered the boards. Once the paste is on one side then I'll lay out the components on the paste use the hot air and if all goes well we should have one side done. Once the first side is done I'll then do the same on the reverse. This is a completed one. I'm using the 1.1 PCB. When I built this one I had an issue with uh, getting it into bootloader. For some reason the button wasn't working so I took off the button and used the solder bridge on the back, got that into bootloader mode, flashed it successfully and then broke the bridge. So we'll see what happens with this one. I'm going to try with a button. If it doesn't work then I'll take the button off, do the same again and uh, we'll see what we get. It's not quite perfect but I have the solder paste applied now. Okay, now time to lay out the components. I'm gonna try and do this on camera, but, but it might be difficult with the camera getting in the way. First thing I'm gonna do is the SX1280 transceiver. You might be able to see there's a little dot on the text at the top of the chip itself. This matches a dot top right of the location on the PCB. Okay, that's on. I'll straighten things up off camera once everything's placed up, it'll just be easier that way. Next up we have the RF output filter, so this just goes to slightly to the right of the SX1280. As you can hopefully see, there is a red mark on the left hand side. So in the orientation I've got the board at the moment, keep the red mark to the left. You can see there the red mark on the left hand side and that's the position of the RF filter. Next the IPEX UFL connector. With these connectors there are four pins. Three pins go to ground which is for the outer ring and then the center pin is the signal pin. So you need to make sure that the signal pin goes to the left hand side next to the RF filter. The easiest way to tell is underneath. As you can see there the center pin is connected to the side nearest the holes on this strip. There we have the UFL connector in position. Next up we have the button. As I mentioned earlier, this caused me a problem on the last build, so I may, may end up taking this off. There's a switch applied in the top left. Next up, capacitors. In the top two places there, there are two 10 nanofarad capacitors. All of the resistors and capacitors for this build are size 0402. Here we have the 10 nanofarad capacitor. There's no correct orientation for these. There's the 10 nanofarad capacitors in place. Next below the button is the XO crystal. Again this doesn't have any orientation. There's the crystals. I'm going to pop one of those just below the button. The crystal in place. Below the crystal is the next capacitor, 100 nanofarad. So there's the 100 nanofarad resistor below the crystal. There's actually another just below the SX1280. So whilst I've got the pack open, I'm going to do that one. That's the second 100 nanofarad capacitor on the bottom. Continuing on the left hand side we're going with a 470 nanofarad capacitor. A 470 nanofarad capacitor. There we go. That's all the capacitors on this side. The next space down on the left, a 1k ohm resistor. 1k ohm resistor in place. The final space on this side is for the LED. You can use any colour. I've chosen blue because it goes nice with the blackboard. It's just a single colour. Again, it's 0402, but I believe 0603 would 
potentially also fit in the space. The LEDs do have a polarity of an anode and a cathode, a positive and a negative. On most of them, there is some sort of indication as to which side is which, and often the negative side will be indicated with a green mark of some description and these do have a slightly green mark on one side you probably can't see it here you have to get very close to look the other way of testing is to use your multimeter if you put it into diode mode put the positive to one side negative to the other when it lights up you'll know which orientation it is based on the orientation of the multimeter probes i'm sure you can barely see but there is the led there and i'm just going to show you the multimeter trick. I have my multimeter set to diode mode and for reference on the mat here the orientation has is the green mark is on the left hand side. If I put this together you can see it lights up. If I reverse that and do the same again it doesn't light up. On the board itself you need to put the green mark the negative side on the left hand side. Okay, so that's the LED in place and I've just strained everything out. Time for some hot air. I'm going to start with a low blower speed because I don't want to blow any of the components off the board. I'm going to do the hot air off camera and I'll be back once completed. Hot air completed, everything's down. I've got a couple of solder bridges. The ones on the right hand side are actually not a problem because they're basically just um, ground pins next to each other. So that will happen. So I'm not too fussed by those. But the top and left and bottom do need some tidying up. And then the crystal, there's this blob. Again, not necessarily a problem because it's not shorting with anything. But I'll try and tidy that up. So I'll get the soldering iron out and get some flux on it and come back when it's tidied. And then we have a completed top side. Tidied it up and then gave it a clean with some isopropyl alcohol. Onto the reverse. So I'll get the stencil back out, apply the solder paste and then come back in a few minutes. Solder paste applied on this side. I'm gonna work down the left hand side, putting all the smaller components on. So top left, we've got a one microfarad capacitor. Capacitor in place. Below that we have the voltage regulator. Voltage regulator. Below that is a 2.2 microfarad capacitor. 2.2 microfarad capacitor on there and last small component is a 300 ohm resistor the resistors on there one thing to note the bottom two pads on the left hand side is where you would bridge if you didn't have a boot button so make sure you don't get solder paste on them when applying it via a stencil so the last piece of the puzzle is the ESP, which you just want to orient as per the silk screen. ESP in place, so that's everything. Again, I'm going to get the hot air out, do that off camera, and then come back when that's been done. Okay, that's the second side finished. So all I need to do now is to solder up to an FTDI USB to serial adapter, making sure that making sure the TX goes to RX, RX to TX, and providing five volts input power. I'll use the Express LRS configurator to flash. I won't go through that on screen as it's basically the same as the method used with the transmitter. So if you want to go over that, take a look at my transmitter build. The one thing you do need to make sure is that the settings for your transmitter match the settings for your receiver. So if you're using hybrid switches on one, use hybrid switches on the other. If you're using 500 hertz, on one, use 500 hertz on the other, and obviously make sure that your bind phrase matches on both transmitter and receiver. Once it's flashed, I'll come back and let you know how it went. If I have any issues with the button again, I'll be sure to let you know. Okay, so flashed successfully first time, bootloader button worked, so now I've wired up power and ground. I'm going to connect this to my power supply and check it connects to the transmitter. Okay, so I have my radio master here. I'm just going to turn on the power to the receiver and let's see what happens. Okay, there we are, it has connected and we've got a low RSSI value here, so and a 100% link quality. Looks like everything's working. I'm pretty happy with the results. 
and hopefully you all found this useful. Cheers for watching.